Today was one of the craziest days in crypto's history that I remember because I made almost $100,000 from an airdrop called Blur. And I literally predicted the entire thing, not just for the past week or two, but for the past one to two months, I predicted the entire thing from top to bottom about what was going to happen. And it's one of the largest airdrops in crypto's history. It's the most I've ever made from an airdrop. And not only did I make a lot of money, I made so many other people a fuck ton of money. In fact, I think it was almost seven figures in total profits between everyone that I told to do the Blur airdrop. And so, as I said, none of this was an accident. I tweeted about this for fucking weeks. I'm gonna put up some tweets on the screen right here. I predicted the market cap it was going to get to. I predicted how it was going to be the only genuine competitor to OpenSea. I predicted the entire NFT exchange token thesis. In fact, I actually covered this in one of my first YouTube videos that I ever made three months ago. And there was many other predictions as well that we'll get into later. But anyway, what I'm trying to say is, is that I played this thing to a fucking T and I'm going to explain to you how I knew that I was going to make so much money, how I knew it was such a lucrative opportunity and how exactly you can find the next blur yourself so that you you can make a bunch of money like I did. And so the first thing I'm gonna cover is how did I know that Blur was going to make me so much money? Well, there was three main things that I saw with Blur which told me that it was gonna make me a bunch of money. And so the first thing that I saw was that Blur was a part of a new and emerging narrative in crypto. Now keep in mind the past few weeks to the past month, everyone's talking about narratives. AI coins, ZK coins, NFT coins, all these new areas of crypto are the areas where the price is going up the most because everyone loves chasing new narratives. And so about two months ago when the entire market was dying, I asked myself, what is the new narratives going to be in crypto where people are going to be putting most of their money? Because I'm not going to buy some shit coin like XRP that's fucking seven years old. I'm going to buy a coin that's one month old where all the attention is and where everyone's putting their money into. And so the thesis that I came up with in this video you're going to see on the screen three months ago was the NFT exchange token thesis. Now, this thesis basically outlines that NFTs and NFT exchanges are going to grow at a similar pace that tokens slash coins did in, let's say, 2019, when Binance became the biggest exchange and, and Binance grew exponentially. I believed that NFTs would be the next frontier of this same level of adoption. This is why this is the first reason that I thought Blur was going to be such a big money-making opportunity because it was the perfect investment of the NFT exchange token thesis. There was a bunch of other coins like Lux, Rary, Xmon, X2Y2. None of them were at the same level as Blur. Blur was just the perfect one that fit the perfect narrative. And so the key to making money with narratives is you have to find the narrative before anyone else is talking about it. So let's say you find a new sector of crypto that no one cares about, like this sector that we're talking about three months ago. If you don't feel like no one is validating you for your thesis, if you feel like you're the only dude talking about this, you're on the right path because it is when everyone is talking about a narrative, when everyone's confident with the narrative, confident with where price is gonna go, that is where the top is in. See, no one was talking about NFT exchange tokens three months ago. Now every fucking dude and their sister is talking about NFT exchange tokens right now. And so this is the time where you don't wanna be buying. This is the time where you wanna be selling. And that's why I've sold most of my blur actually already. And so this leads me into the second point, which is slightly different. And it's about a team that actually cares about its community. So. How did I know Blur was going to be big? Well, there's hundreds of coins that are doing airdrops, but most of the coins doing airdrops are total f***ing sh They just ride this airdrop trend to attract people and give them the smallest amount of money possible to get some test users of a platform. They have like some sort of like broke person mindset where it's like, oh, we don't want to give away too much free money to all the people in the crypto market. No, but we want to get the fucking these people in to use our platform. It's the wrong mentality that most of these projects have. They want to give away pennies and expect huge attention and adoption in return. It doesn't work. Blur took a different approach. They said from the get go, look guys, we're gonna give most of the tokens to the community. Blur is gonna be community owned and that's how it's gonna be. That is a much better approach than what these other projects are doing where they're basically saying, we're gonna airdrop 1% of coins to people who do the airdrop and they're gonna to have to do 100 hours of trying to figure out our fucking shitty platform to make it work. That is not a good airdrop. So you need to be finding teams that care about the community, that care about 
actually doing a proper airdrop that is of a solid size. And this is why some of the biggest airdrops were from some of the most competent teams. Think about DYDX. People made from five to $100,000 from the DYDX airdrop. They're the most competent decentralized perpetual exchange team in crypto. Let's think about Uniswap. Uniswap gave away tens of thousands of dollars to so many different users of the platform. Think about how competent the Uniswap team is. The best projects in crypto also tend to be the ones who give away the most value because they have the right approach to crypto. And so the next big thing that stuck out for me with Blur was the real adoption that the Blur platform had. So in the NFT world, right, you've got looks, you've got Rarible, you've got X2Y2, you've got a bunch of these like really shitty NFT platforms, right? And they're down the bottom in the dumpster. The market caps for these platforms are about, let's say 20 to $150 million. And then you've got this huge gap of like nothing until OpenSea. And OpenSea owns the entire fucking market. Their valuation is about 13.3 billion dollars. And so you can see that all these NFT exchanges are all here and OpenSea is here. And there's this huge gap where there's no genuine competition. And so Blur is the first NFT exchange token to get real adoption, where it's bridging the gap between the shitty NFT exchanges stuck in the fucking swamp over to OpenSea where it's the king. And Blur is the first real competitor to OpenSea that's actually taking OpenSea users and bringing them over to Blur and keeping them there. And so when you're an airdrop participant and you're deciding where to sell Blur, what do you use to value what the NFT is worth? Well, there's four main things that you would look out for as a Blur airdrop participant to decide where to sell. Number one is how much real volume is occurring on Blur? So every day, how much buying and selling is going on on the platform? Number two is how much users are on Blur? So are people actually using it? Is it just 10 whales just wash trading between each other? Or is it actually genuine a lot of people in there? Number three is how fast the team innovates. So when OpenSea stops trading of a certain NFT on Blur because of they're not doing ro royalties properly, how fast is Blur pivoting to fix the problem? And number four is all of the above compared to the competitors in the same industry. So Blur compared to looks on its volume and its users, et cetera. And so when an airdrop participant and you do this analysis, you can see in the photo here that this graphic that I'm gonna put up, that Blur is the first competitor to OpenSea that is actually making genuine strides. And that is why Blur has such a high valuation out the gate because it's bridging the gap between the 150 million valuation and the 13.3 billion valuation. It's bridging the gap between the two. And that's why the fully diluted valuation of Blur is about 1.5 $5 billion dollars at the moment. And I've been saying this for over a month now. I've got a tweet here, 56,000 traders on Blur past 30 days. I'm hitting consistent top 30 to 60 on the leaderboard. The competitor OpenSea is valued at $13 billion. Most of the coins are airdropped to the users. How much do you think I'll make from this airdrop? And another one, reminder that as looks and other NFT exchange tokens rally higher, the fair valuation for Blur rises too. Potential for Blur to open at a 500 to $1 billion market cap. What did Blur open at? about a 1.5 billion market cap. So I was pretty much spot on. In fact, I was a little bit low on the estimate. And so what I expect for Blur going forward is if Blur can continue to take market share from OpenSea, the magnet of Blur's valuation towards OpenSea will literally just become magnetized higher and higher and higher. If OpenSea can be worth $13 billion and Blur can trade a similar amount of volume and have a similar amount of adoption, why can't Blur be worth a similar amount of money? That's the question that investors are gonna ask themselves and it's the main narrative that's gonna drive Blur forwards. And so now that you know why Blur was a super obvious money-making play and why you're an idiot if you didn't know that it was gonna make you money, let's go into how you can find the next airdrop. I don't want you to continue being an idiot. I wanna make you intelligent so that you can make some money with me when the next one comes up. So there's a five-step process that's pretty simple to follow to find the next Blur. And so the first step of a five-step process to find the next blur is basically identify a growing sector of crypto. So just like I did, I did my research on my computer and I found NFT exchange tokens and I made a thesis around it. And I decided this is the growing sector of crypto that I think is gonna appreciate a lot. I'm gonna invest in it, that's step one. Now, step two is determine which project, teams and founders are the most competent. So what you need to realize about business, because these are businesses, is that a bad team with a great product will fail eventually because a bad team cannot pivot to changes in the market. But a good team or an amazing team with a shit product will survive long term because they can pivot and eventually they'll find something that works. And because they're a good team, 
they'll make it work. And so when you're looking for a good airdrop, an airdrop needs to be worth a lot of money for you to make a lot of money. The best teams will make the projects which are worth the most amount of money. So you wanna find the best projects to invest in. Blur is the best NFT exchange token and it has the best team in this niche. So that's why I picked Blur. Number three, how expensive is it to game the airdrop? So if everyone knows there's an airdrop and everyone has done the airdrop in crypto, let's say 10 million people have done the airdrop, who is left to buy the token after the airdrop has occurred? No one. So that would not work to make a profitable airdrop. But let's say 100 people navigated their way through the platform and they managed to figure out this super complex method to farm the airdrop. And then let's say there's 50,000 people who couldn't figure it out. And now the token's launched, it's been airdropped. How much is that token gonna be worth? Well, that token's gonna be worth much more because it's very expensive in terms of money and in terms of time, it's also very confusing to game the airdrop, meaning that most people will buy after the coin has already launched. Now, this is what happened with Blur. It was very confusing. I sent it to a lot of people. I said, hey, it's pretty simple. Just bid on some NFTs. Most people f couldn't figure it out. They were like, oh, I don't know how to bid an NFT. It's too hard. Now they're buying Blur after the airdrops launch when they've all made, all made money. It's really important that you find an airdrop that's hard to gain. The more difficult it is for you to do the airdrop, the better. Step number four is how many coins are they giving away? We discussed this earlier. If a project is only giving away like 1% of its supply in an airdrop, probably not worth it. If a project is giving away like 12% of the total supply, which is what Blur did, then it's probably worth it. And number five is how much time do you have to farm the airdrop? So it took me two months of farming to build up to the point where I got about 82,000 points for myself, which made me about $60,000 or so. It took me about two months to get there of constantly bidding on NFTs and farming the airdrop, right? If you have like three days left until the airdrop's over, probably not worth your time. You need to find airdrops early enough that you have the time to put in to farm the airdrop, okay? Most of the time you'll find an airdrop and it's too late. Most people found Blur a few days before the airdrop was happening because they're too late. That's how most people find airdrops, they're too late. So you need to find the airdrop early enough that you're given enough time to capitalize on it to make enough money. And so if you've watched all this video and you're like, Daniel, that's too hard. I, I can't be bothered to spend hundreds of hours researching, networking with people, combining ideas with different people that I've networked with. I can't be bothered to fucking figure out airdrop complex platforms. I just can't be bothered. I'm too busy doing my nine to five. If that's what you're feeling right now, totally fine. I run a mastermind which literally teaches you and tells you every single opportunity in crypto that you should be focusing on. You have two choices. You can spend hundreds of hours figuring it out yourself and probably failing, or you can join the mastermind and you can have me figure it out for you because I do this full time and tell you exactly what to do. Now, this is what I did for the Blur airdrop. For weeks, I was telling my mastermind dudes, do the airdrop, do the airdrop, do the airdrop. And lots of people did. A few people still didn't do it, but lots of people did. And this is all the money that they made. You'll see it on the screen, a bunch of fucking money. So if you would like to be ready for the next blur, for the next airdrop, for the next big money making opportunity, the mastermind group is where I teach this. And so if you'd like to apply, I'm not accepting everyone. You'll find a link below, danscryptomastermind.com. In fact, for the month of February, I'm only opening two more spots because I want to keep the group small. I'm not going to let a fucking herd in. I like to keep it small, exclusive, only people who are genuinely committed to making money from crypto. And so thank you guys for watching the video. It was a bit of a longer one, but that's because it was such an important topic. I wanted to cover it in enough depth. Yeah, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.